Hello everybody, Konaja here. Welcome back to Automation. The brand new open beta version of Automation. Everything looks the same except for this guy right here. That is new. I think the biggest news, however, is that we now have V6 engines. You can build these unbalanced, crazy six-cylinder contraptions. These play a major important part to late, well, we'll say all of 90s to modern car design. When cars started to become primarily front-wheel drive, V6s became extremely important to automotive design. Uh, it's obviously not just a front-wheel drive engine. It does have its benefits for rear-wheel drive engines as well. Uh, just look at the, how compact that design is versus an inline six. You know, you'd have a lot more length on an inline six of this size. This is a three and a half liter inline six, or sorry, V6, uh, and that just takes up so much space and throws off your weight distribution, throws off a lot of things. Uh, so there is a benefit to having this V6, even though in reality, in the real world, not typically my favorite engine. Uh, but some of my favorite cars do have V6s, do have V6s in them, uh, so I'm not a hater. It's just, uh, it's just not my, my first choice. Now that's not the only thing that has changed in this new version. There's also some great new UI flow kind of things, which I mean by that is the user interface. Uh, the way you design cars is much improved. The, the visual appearance of them and the ability to make sub-models and sub-trims and things like that way, way improved. And we'll walk through that uh, in a few minutes. But let's first take a look at this button right here. This is the workshop. Now, modding has been around for a while here in Automation. I actually used mods in the entire Vector Automotive Challenge series that we just uh, went through. So all of these cars used, you know, modded fixtures, things like that. It's all been on, well, it's all been very forum based. You know, you have to go to the forum, find the mod you want, find a mod pack, and then manually install it in the game, things like that. Uh, the Steam Workshop integration is really, really important because this will probably be one of the things that really takes the game to the next level. The, the quality and quantity of fixtures and bodies that the community can put out is pretty incredible. Uh, this workshop has only been up for a couple weeks now, and most of this stuff is already stuff that's already been out, you know, publicly available on the forum and whatnot, uh, but already there's tons of stuff in here. Uh, you can go to headlights, and here you go, let's say... Uh, you want... Uh, let me choose something that I actually have not already installed. Okay, so you want some more door handles. Trackpad user has a pack of door handles of various, you know, sizes and styles, colors. This is all stuff that will help you build unique cars versus everybody else out there because uh, nobody wants to build the same cars over and over again, so... It's, uh, it's just, it's great that we can do this because the developers, if they just focused on making fixtures and bodies and stuff, we'd never get the Tycoon's parts of this game, so... This is really important. I'm trying to put emphasis on that. This is really important to the future of automation. So the Steam Workshop, to me, is a bit clunky. I actually sat here for a while trying to figure out how to even use the freaking thing. I'm like, wow, okay, this is great. Yeah, okay, I can rate. I can rate, uh... The, the quality and whatnot, I can make comments on it, I can say, nice pieces, thanks! Yeah, sure, how do I install them? You know, usually you would think, oh, there's an install button, there's a download button. Nah, nah. Subscribe. Subscribe to this fixture, and you will install it. You will have to restart the game in order for them to be added in, but the next time you log in, and you can just exit out of this, and exit out of this, Quit the game, start it again, and those fixtures will be part of the game. That doesn't that doesn't uh, flow perfectly, and that's more of a Steam integration type of thing. It's not really the fault of uh, the automation developers, so 
Uh, hopefully people will be able to pick up on that, and hopefully I help some of you out there make it a little bit more obvious, and <laughs> you won't have to sit there for ten minutes looking at it dumb-faced like I did. Um, so let's actually quit the game. And here we are back in the game, and now if we go to the sandbox and we make a new car, we will be able to use those new fixtures. So while we're making a new car, let's let's just do one for fun. This is going to be completely outside of the realm of the normal Vector Automotive Challenge. But let's just make a car that will show off some of the new features. And let's go to my favorite era of the 90s. And let's look at the hatchback bodies. Uh, let's actually go to the coupes. So in the 90s, we now have this body available. And there are a few new bodies available for, for this update. Uh, not even including the, the modded ones, there's some actual official content. So we have this not an S2000 MX-5 body, which uh, is not bad in its original configuration, but it has uh, some nice morphing to it as well. You, know, you can do crazy things with it to really make unique looking cars. Let's maybe not go that unique though. So this is, this is great and all, but let me actually get started on this thing so I can show you some of the new features. So here we go, I've made this all pretty on point with, uh, you know, your normal 90s sports car. And then we move on to the first fixture tab. Yeah, there's another one down there, but let's, let's deal with this one first. And some of the new things will include the ability to copy fixtures. So let's say we want to use some of these S2000-esque headlights and well these are modern ones so they do have some weird body clipping and we are still in the beta build so gotta keep that in mind as well these are actually a little bit too big but let's say that we wanted to go crazy and make quad headlights on this thing uh, you can actually hold shift and grab it and you will copy that headlight you will copy whatever fixture you you had chosen at the moment uh, so this is probably not the place for that to come in handy. However, it does come in handy if you want to just quickly compare, you know, different different layouts of the same fixture. So, yeah, I actually like these a little bit more upside down, as I seem to typically like. So you're working on the front end here, and you notice, ah, man, I really wish I had to made this nose so bulbous. I really like the design I'm going with. Uh, it used to be that you were stuck with this. You... You had to either delete all your fixtures and start over, or just live with it. That is no longer the case. Now you can go back to the morphing phase and say, ah, let's bring that hood down a little bit. And it will automatically adjust your fixtures and keep them so that you don't necessarily have to start all over. Oh, much better, much better. And then you can just go right back to your fixtures and get back to work. Another thing is that it helps out with the selecting of fixtures that are stacked on fixtures. That's a common tactic to be kind of adding a lot of detail to the car, but it's always been frustrating trying to select one or the other because the game didn't really let you know which one you were selecting. So now it actually highlights which item you're about to be moving around. And if you, you know, select the, the grill behind it, it'll automatically bring you back to the grills. If you select the light, it'll bring you back to the light. So there is another helpful feature. And here we got the door handles and all of the new options are already installed. They're ready to be used. I don't really remember which ones are the new ones, but it looks like probably these guys, huh? Uh, what do they look like? Are they up and down kind? Probably not the best choice for this car. And what's, what's going on here? Like a little push button guy? Interesting, I guess it's like the lock mechanism. Yep, it's the lock mechanism, so you can do separate lock mechanisms from your handles. Uh, these, I think, are just regular ones, but they are probably the right choice for this car. Another nice little change is that you can undo things here in the fixture placing process. So if I, say, moved this somewhere I didn't want it, I can just hit undo, and all is right with the world, and it can redo as well. Very nice, very nice improvements. And we all know the struggle of not having enough wheel arch to fit your nice wide tires. And then you've got your nice body already made. That is no longer a problem. You can adjust these after the fact as well. So we wouldn't be stuck with those silly 165s. 
bring that to a realistic 215. Just bring it back down a little bit. And uh, no real dramas. You can even go in and then fix this lip because it can now stick out further. Just everything about the fixture process is way easier, way less frustrating, and much improved. And yet another thing you can do, you could copy this and uh, make it into a new trim. And this new trim would be a coop, because this body has the ability to be a hatch or a coop. Select the coop, and it adjusts your fixtures and everything to match the coop body. And you can even adjust it even post, you know, the uh, the initial morphing phase, you can still kind of move this around a little bit, and it'll keep your fixtures. Now this this body doesn't necessarily have a whole lot in that regards, uh, but you can still change it as you want. So that is that's another feature that will make it uh, a little bit better for making a full model range. So that's very cool. Two thumbs up from the Cone Dodger. Then there's a second fixture tab. This one will be to make specific model adjustments or specific trim adjustments. So say you had a base in a sport model and you wanted to make the sport model look a little bit more sporty and throw some obnoxious fence on there, uh, you know, wherever. You could do that and you're not going to change the original car. You could, you could make individual changes per trim. The year is 1995, we're building a two-door sports car. The choice is now four-cylinder or V6, inline four or V6. Inline sixes have pretty much gone away, unless you're a Supra. Now the V6 engine has really good compactness. Look at the, look at the arrows here, and it starts with a three liter. I bet you if we go to the inline six, and yeah, you can look at the difference in the length. Uh, now this body is pretty accommodating, but let's let's just experiment. We could go up to approximately a 96.6 bore uh, before we start to really oversize this. So we'll say around 3.6 liters. Now let's go back to the V6, and I bet we can go a lot bigger than that. Indeed, we can. We could make an obnoxious, super big V8 sized V6 fit into this body. So there's the advantage of the V6. We're not going to make one quite that big though. Let's go actually pretty far down, but make it short stroked and how about 2.8 liters? That sounds, that sounds very nice. We'll do dual overhead cam, four valve per cylinder. Uh, let's do some VVL on there too. Cast iron would be fine. Max RPM of average, probably okay then. Uh, and so this will be a pretty affordable but decent power engine. Let's do average there, or just do cast there as well, and see what we can see what we can do with just that. Now before you get too excited, twin turbos or single turbos, neither of which will be available for the V6s in this release. Turbos in general and automation need a lot of work, both from the simulation standpoint, uh, the the data that is collected on turbos, the sounds need work, and the visuals would need to be made for the V6s as well. So a lot of work needs to be put into the turbos before uh, they are in any kind of shape to be adding them to V6s. And honestly, uh, just having the V6s in NA form adds so much depth to the game doesn't really bother me that there's not going to be turbos on the v6s just yet and we'll do kind of standard stuff in here with multi-pointing fi we'll do a twin intake because i love 300 z's and i love their twin intakes <laughs> we'll do just regular old premium like mid mid-grade us fuels and a 6500 rpm rev limit and we'll see what that does we'll do some just basic tubular headers and how about Single exhaust, I did put a single exhaust on the car, so let's do that. Uh, let's hope to make 260 horsepower. And we'll do some quiet-ish mufflers because V6s should be seen and not heard. How did we do? How did we do? Why, it's, that dino chart looks pretty encouraging. Run, 
45 horsepower. How about the sounds? I think I think some of the most accurate sounds I've heard in automation so far. So hopefully uh, this level of sound work goes into some of the other engines because, I, like I said, I think these sound a little bit more authentic than uh, some of the other ones have sounded. So thumbs up to that too. So I think there's probably a little tuning left in this engine. Looks like we're having zero bottom end issues, so we can actually increase that rev limit, which increases our power quite significantly. Wow, this thing wants to rev forever, doesn't it? 7,300 before it's having any issues. We're already up to 263 horsepower. Not too shabby. Fuel octane, so we got plenty of compression to add to this guy. So we end up with 272 horsepower, 212 foot-pounds of torque. Pretty average performance for a mid-90s V6. And uh, pretty good economy too, 22.34. I think this is a pretty good fit for your, for your mid-90s sports car V6. As far as the trim out stuff goes, not too many changes. Uh, the braking mechanics have been tweaked some. Now we have a different drum option for your older cars, and there is also changes to how the pad types behave. I believe it is the case that now a more aggressive pad will not fade as badly as a comfort pad. I could test that somehow. Okay, by using super small rotors, we have fade in there now. So yes, if you go with more aggressive pads, you will get less fade. So, you know, the race pads, basically. And, uh, yeah, it still has the same drawbacks as before, but you're actually getting more drivability in this case because of the less fade. But you'll still get an increase in sportiness by your more aggressive pads. Uh, just makes a little bit more sense. And overall, from what I've heard, the calculations for the size of the rotors and whatnot have been tweaked also. That is something that I had mentioned before seemed perhaps a little bit out of whack. So now you could stop this car with a 260mm 260 rotor uh, and that sounds pretty reasonable to me. Just in case anybody's wondering, here's the stats on the car we built. Didn't put a whole lot of emphasis into this and it was just for the sake of kind of showing off the new features. Looks like I actually need to adjust the gearing some. There we go. And yeah, there we go. There's the actual features. Not a bad little sports car for the 90s. It's not really standout, but it's, uh, I think it's good enough to skate in some of those sales right before this market dies away. <laughs> so there's a good wrap-up on the update and all of its new features and changes. So, I have the words that nobody likes to hear from their significant other, but you're probably not going to like them here either. We need to talk. The current Vector Automotive Challenge has to come to a close, basically. All of the cars that I have previously built will no longer load and no longer open in new versions uh, because of the way the the new modding system works. I can't just download the old mod pack and put them into the game. I, and overall, it's just kind of a mess. I'm, I try to open these, bad things happen. Just <laughs> Let's just not go there. Um, but that's not the end of the world. I was getting close to the end of that series' is, is run anyway. So, we have a choice. We could start anew with a new model year completely fresh from scratch in 2010, and then work through probably, you know, 2015. Or, we could start a new Vector Automotive Challenge completely in a different era. Uh, probably I was thinking either going back and doing something historic, like late 50s to early 60s, or we have a third option. The third option is this. I could take a failing company and try and turn them around. That would be to try and say, take a modern Mitsubishi and using the best available parts that they have and maybe some new ideas, some new innovations, to try and revive the company, uh, maybe an 80s Chrysler or Dodge. It'll probably be a smaller company. Try and keep it, you know, feasible for me to recreate. Or it could be fictional, something that I design and kind of go along the same pitfalls that companies seem to fall in, or something similar to a, a failed company of the past. Uh, I'm, I'm going to think about it. I'm not 100% sure yet. But I guarantee you this, the next episode you will see will be starting a new season in automation 
hope you're excited, and I hope you're excited for the new update to automation. It's really good. The open beta is out now. You can opt, in opt into that, or you could just wait for the regular release of the new version, which will be coming up shortly. So thanks as always for watching, thanks for all the support of the series, and I'll see you next time.